I met this weather-beaten old man in the smoker of a train near North Bay, Ontario. He was friendly, uh, so I offered him a cigarette. No thanks, he replied. In this country, I roll my own. Now, I like tailor-made ones all right, mind you. But if you'd seen as much misery as I have, you wouldn't smoke them either. Three weeks later, when I visited this tomatry, I found out why. You see, this old man loved the outdoors and the blessings of nature. And he told me that as a national commentator, I should certainly have a look at tomogamy. There's a good story for you, mister, he added. So I took the train from Toronto and headed into the north. I met the old man again. He was sitting by the lake in a favorite spot. He was silent for quite a while before he began the story that I had come to hear. He told me that I should see the broad sweep of the country from the fire tower. Later I did. And from that lofty perch, my eye reveled in a scene flowing with green and swimming in lakes. I saw waters which call the angler from afar. There were nooks which are the haven of campers. I saw that people had come here from all over Ontario and from far beyond our borders. Here, people realized lifetime ambitions. It was beautiful, but I learned too that the forests were and are the backbone of Ontario's economic life. Timber operators take from the forests logs for lumber, pulp and paper. Trees mean wages and employment. The forests are a treasure and a treasury too. Most of these things I already knew, but the old man made them seem more real and important. He talked of the wildlife in the forests, baby owls. We saw a fawn too. Cute little fellow, isn't he? Truly, it was a place of beauty. And through the old man's words, I came to appreciate it more than ever. The coloring of the leaves in fall left me breathless. The sunset, too, was another piece of sheer beauty. But to the old man, it was ominous. For the colors were caused by smoke. I learned that a forest fire had broken out, and the forests were once again in danger. Urgently needed equipment was being flown in by one of the planes of the forestry department. The pilot was instructed by the chief ranger to take me along that I might tell you the truth about forest fires. heavily loaded, we made a good takeoff and were on our way. I could see the beauty of the lakes and forests from the air, and the thought of fire in such magnificence seemed impossible. Then, in the distance, a column of smoke there was the enemy of the forest in action. This was our objective. Circling around, we sideslipped into position for the landing.
landed and taxied to the shore. And soon, I was at the left flank of the fire. It was then that I began to realize the vastness of the fire area. This was a war. Men slogged grimly through the woods. I followed and soon saw action on the front line for the first time. Everyone and everything capable of fighting the fire was being used. Here, bulldozers made a fire line quickly through the woods. The fire raged all that day, and weary firefighters went to sleep on the ground as the flames slowed down for a few hours before dawn. The next morning, I went back with one crew for more equipment. They loaded up quickly and then headed for the forest once more. The chief ranger met them in the fire area and told them where to leave the outfits. I stayed with them as they did this. Hose, several bags of it. Gasoline for the pump. and the pump itself, and all other necessary tools and equipment. The last outfit they carried into a lake. They set up there and ran their hoses out, on up the hill. They went to the limit to which one pump could force the water. As the pump could force it no higher, they then set up a reservoir to catch the water. The rangers call it a relay tank, in this case, a canoe. At the canoe, they set up a second pump to force the water on up to the fire. In this way, they relayed the water to the fire. Hours of back-breaking work before they even came in sight of the flames. Then, at last, they met the fire. It was an awesome spectacle, scaring and seemingly hopeless. had burned through this section pretty well and passed on to devour fresh trees. This crew had to stay and keep it from breaking out again. What once had been green was now smoldering and blackened. 
the deer was trapped and left dead. I won't try to describe what the fire had done. Just see for yourself. Utter desolation. Once those blackened derelicts had bright green coats and men admired them as trees. <laughs> and careless people caused nine out of ten of these fires. I had seen the chief ranger and his men fighting a big fire, but I soon learned that they have another job which is just as important. They're constantly on the alert to detect small fires and put them out before they become large. The cost is great. Lookout towers are located throughout the northern forests. The tower man sees a small smudge of smoke He sights on it. He takes the reading. And reports by phone to headquarters. Meanwhile, from a second tower, another reading is sent in. In this case, by radio. At headquarters, the two readings are used to locate the fire on the map. Word goes out from headquarters over the radio to the nearest ranger station. The deputy sends out a two-man party in a hurry. carry water packs and are soon at the small fire. They put it out and then I thought that I'd seen the whole story of fire control. But I was wrong. This is the Tomogamy Division. I had seen many men and much equipment fighting a big fire and preventing small ones. I was impressed. This was a big organization protecting a big area. But it's pretty small compared to the rest of the province. Ontario stretches 1,282 miles, one third of the way across the continent. Tomogamy is only one of 43 such divisions in Ontario needed to protect the people's great forest empire. Each division must have men and equipment. The size of the job, almost frightening. Different equipment in different districts. For example, down at Parry Sound, much of the transport is done by boat. These two big cruisers cost plenty. The tower at Parry Sound is right in the town. It's a show place, but more important, it's educational. Educational work is a big part of the chief ranger's job. Every year, he visits all the summer camps for boys around Lake Tomogamy. The camp director and his assistant were at the float to greet him. The boys gather in an outdoor meeting place and listen intently, in this case, to the story of the great Haleberry fire. After the talk, a demonstration how to build a campfire safely. First, select a good spot near water. Clear away all inflammable debris. Right down to mineral earth. Build your fire of small sticks. They will give enough heat. 
No, son, that one is much too big. Now comes the question of how to put it out. Pour on lots of water. Spread the fire. Throw the big pieces into the lake. Pour on more water. And finally, run your hands through the wetted coals, just to be sure. Keep your fire away from pine needles. It may spread. Avoid roots. Fire could travel along them. Keep away from logs. Settlers must get a permit to burn brush. The ranger gives them a safety talk. Logging operators cooperate. Their men use safety lighters and roll their own cigarettes. The public is not always so careful. This fellow didn't stop to smoke. It's pretty nice to drive along the highway through green timber. Out the window's not the place for it. This can easily happen. And spread and look like this. No, uh, put your butts in the ashtray. Crush cigarettes out on rocks or drop them in water. Break your match. Throw it in the water. Treat your pipe the same way. My friend was a good woodsman. We should all try to be good woodsmen. The old man I met told me I'd find a good story in Tomogamy, and he was right. He was in love with this matchless country, and through his help, I found something more than just a story. I discovered that the protectors of this outdoor playground, the watchmen of this wealth of ours, are men like my friend, the ranger. These fellows feel the forest. It's more than a job to them. It's devotion to nature, a partnership with nature. Now, you may say to yourself, oh, yes, that's true enough, but don't they have lots of help and lots of equipment? How about all those pumps and trucks? It's true. They do have lots of equipment, and it costs us lots of money, but it isn't enough to do the job. But there is an answer, and you and I can do something about that. We can just that little bit, which will ease the load of these hard-working men on the job. We can be careful. We can even use our brains a bit for a change. And we can make sure that we never do anything which will let a fire loose in our forests. You see, nature was not meant to be scarred. 